It's actually held in February, uh, this February 6 to 8, and that's called Three Day Startup. It's an event that uh, you can like build your own product within three days with a bunch of team with a, a bunch of people in your team, where you form your team, your you like create your ideas and you like nurture it, and finally you can bring your idea and present it to a bunch of capitalists and you ask them for <laughs> for like investment. Well, all this process actually it's you know, there's no real money involved, but it's actually a very good. Uh, experience where you can gain the knowledge of entrepreneurship, and uh, this will be held again February six to eight. And if you are interested in this, you can apply at uh, global. And there will be a bunch of mentors and uh, judges involved, and Pito is one of the mentors. And I think this is a very good opportunity to get to know people from uh, industry, and uh, you can make your networking work there. And uh, if you're really interested in creating ideas and being an uh, entrepreneur, just sign up and uh, bring your brain. Nothing else needed. Thank you. I can say that I've been a mentor there several years. It's really fun. Uh, you get to meet students not just from computer science but from business as well. Get together in, in teams of five or six or seven. Uh, there's yeah, you can write. You can like your own, obviously. Nobody's voted up anybody else so far. Everybody should vote. I tell you what. Everybody should put at least uh, two clicks. Whether you you put one for the first time or you upvote somebody else's, but you should vote for at least two, hopefully for three. Okay. And if, if uh, while we're talking about this, if you have questions, remind me again what this product does or whatever. We can have a discussion. Let's be all quiet. Boom. There we go. Somebody put two in one line. That's uh, going to make voting hard. Okay, somebody didn't notice that student opinions was already listed and didn't vote it up. Try to find if it's already listed so you can vote it up. But how do you vote about this? How do you vote it? You gotta click on that zero and make it a, I think it becomes a one or something? No. Well, what do you mean that? Vote? Downvote, downvote. Yeah, it's an upvote and downvote right below the. Yeah, it's, like it's under, very small. Very small. Yeah, very small. How, how old is this company? It's, Why? It's new. It's been around. That, that's what you said. But it's yeah. new. It's new. I mean, last semester. You should email them. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> last semester I tried to use them and they were not even this far. So it just shows also, by the way, you could build this, right? It doesn't look that hard to build. That uh, there's things that are really useful that are not necessarily super hard to build. Just, just an yeah. interesting lesson. Yeah. Keep voting. 
See what we got here. Okay, great. Awesome. Great, 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 great. So what's going to happen? So we're going to have, in a little while. We're going to have a little discussions about about these products. Uh, and what I'm going to ask is that um, uh, we do some. We'll break up into teams, maybe tomorrow at the lab, uh, and try to take these ideas another level deeper. And meanwhile, um, Chris, who's here, there you are, uh, is keeping track of vaguely keeping track of who's interested in what product. And what we're going to try to do is mix it all together and come up with product uh, with teams that sort of reflect your interests to the best of our abilities. OK? So um, when we talk about it, remind you know, say your name again so we know who's talking. And we'll take it from there. But enough about this. Let's go back to the um, uh, you, yeah. may, you may keep voting on this, by the way, as we talk about other stuff. If I get really boring, um, you, know, you can do that to entertain yourself. Uh, but anyway, so let's go to this stuff. So let's talk about the homework. Huh? The movie's one. Um, uh, let's see. So the, the, the theory was that you all handed it in. Um, I'm, I haven't checked whether you have or not, um, because it probably was a little bit challenging. I don't know. Uh, and the second theory was that there are some questions in the description of the problem uh, that I wanted you guys to think about so I can call on you at random to ask you those questions, right? So that's what we're going to do now. So um, the questions are, um, let's start with something very simple. Um, what is, how do you compute the popularity of a certain movie? Starting with uh, you. Well, um, the way I did it first, so this is a subjective answer. Right? It's a total, yeah, there's no one right answer. A lot of these things don't have one right answer. Right, the way I did it um, was I just uh, simply tallied up how many times the movie was voted or At rated. All. Yep. And I, I the reason I decided to do that and yep. not consider ratings was because, like, for example, if you go on YouTube, yep. um, a movie, like a YouTube sh like a video's popularity is based purely on views. Yep. Nothing else, not about how, how people rated it or something else. Yep, yep. And, there's act and all the ratings are, there's none that say it's bad. They, they don't explain what the number exactly. means. And what scale, what scale did you use for the ratings? Oh, I just wanted to add to that. Yep. Uh, for a lot of the lower numbers, there are a lot of ties. So I thought maybe you could use the ratings as a tiebreaker. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. So in other words, if they have the same number of votes, yeah. but one has a higher absolute number. Um, yeah? I did, um, I did uh, something similar to uh, Deb. And, but what I did was I thought that movies that came out earlier might have a, an unfair disadvantage in terms of popularity because they might have been seen later on. Uh -huh. So what I did was I, you know, we have a timestamp, yep. so I calculated a 90-day period, uh -huh. and I said from the first review, yep. which I assumed as the release date, yep. um, what's the popularity, what's the count of reviews within 90 days of that first Nice, date? nice refinement. Okay, great. Um, how about you? What do you do for, um, for popularity? Popularity, yeah. Um, kind of, I just use mean um, ratings and organize them highest mean ratings, yeah. best, lowest mean ratings. I mean, again, there's no correct answer. In fact, th this is what lets you really admire what people like Netflix do, because they, to try to figure out an algorithm that's I fair was, and reasonable. Yeah, I was thinking of, because uh, that seems a little, mm -hmm. a little bit of, um, do it of averaging, like mean ratings and total reviews, and like averaging where they were mm -hmm. on that. But then I was thinking, like, well, then how would you possibly have like a, a top one or whatever? Because mm -hmm. then like the highest rated one might have like three reviews. So but like nothing's an average, average mm -hmm. number one. Okay. So just getting a little closer to my number one. So just like okay, good, 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 good. Um, how about um, 
similarity. This is much more tricky, right? The popularity list, well, that's just the same thing, but just sorted. Uh, by the way, did, does everybody realize that within, at least I believe it's true, that within the website, the Latte website, there is a forum area where you guys can post and other students can answer? Everybody knows this? Some people have posted, please use that instead of sending me or the TA a question because then everybody can benefit from it. Um, and there was a question asked of me about the, saying that sort by, was it one of you guys that sort by doesn't work or was that the other class? Yes. Can you explain the, the problem you had and the solution? Uh, yes. What was your name again? Uh, Jing Feng. Jing okay. Uh, I used to sort an array by the, an object, and it has two uh, attributes, just like couple. And I want to sort by the second uh, attribute. Uh -huh. So I use sort by, but uh, Y, follow the instruction of the API, it not works. And then uh, Peter answered me, it is not in place. Uh, yeah. To do that, I need to assign to another array or just use another uh, in place. Sort by. Yeah. Did you guys understand that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Question. Sort by does work. Though. You just specify which element you're sorting by. No, but that that wasn't the problem he had. So the problem he had was that it didn't seem to do anything. Yeah. And so because if you try this in your uh, your IRD, if you try this, two, three, four, what? Two, three, one. Dot sort. Uh, sorry. A equals two, three, one, and then A dot sort, and you check A, A will not be sorted. Why? Why will A not be sorted after this? Yeah? It's just returning the sorted value. Right. This, this result is sorted, but it's not stored in A. How would I make it be sorted? Yeah? You can use an exclamation mark. Yeah, exactly. You would do A sort bank. Remember I said this, I think I said this in the first class, how sometimes you'll see methods with a bang on them, and that usually means it's the more destructive or the more powerful one. So sort bang means sort in place, you modify the parameter, yes? I just have a question about like mutating an object in uh, Ruby in general. Yeah. So like I know in Java, if you had to do the same operation, yeah. it would uh, automatically mutate the actual object, right? right? But like in Ruby, it's a little bit unclear when the object gets mutated or when it just creates like a copy of a... It's uh, totally uh, a, a question of what this method chooses to do, mm -hmm. okay? So in by and large, in more kind of a more functional style, it will not mutate it. It'll just return the, the, changed, uh, the changed object. But, and there's not a lot of times when that's a big issue, but generally you'll see a, a, a companion method with the exclamation. Because I initially had like tons of bugs in my code because I didn't realize yeah. it doesn't do it like the Java way. It doesn't yeah. do it. Doesn't right. Work. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess a uh, similar thing with the uh, with the punctuation on the method. So does the so the exclamation point modifies the method call? Doesn't no, it doesn't modify. No. So no. sort. It's just another name. It's simply another a oh, so letter. Uh, so if you add a uh, uh, question mark, then is that a similar? Does it do similar? No, is this it, will fail. It's, there's no such, there's no method called sort question mark. Okay. It's literally just part of the name. All right. Okay. It's weird. So so that's why you can't uh, you can't make like for example I could write a method def even sub i, and I could say i percent two equals zero n, and this will return true if i is even, right? Josh, it'll return true if i is even, so it's a, it's a checker, yeah. but it doesn't have a question mark. Now, if I wanted to document my code, I would call it even question mark. And then I would be fitting within the convention. It's just part of the name. All right. Are there like often like names, I guess, that do are different with the question mark at the end? You know what I mean? Like how the exclamation point is a different one. No. Oh, oh no. That's usually it's just that because it's always one that returns true false. And again, not always. It's convention. I could call any method something with a question mark. It wouldn't do anything wrong because that's just part of the name. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about similarity, which is a lot more hairy. Who wants to talk about what they did or thought that they should do with similarity? One or two movies similar? Yes. One or two movies similar. Two, sorry, two people similar. Sorry. So what I did was um, I went, I found where two users had both watched the same movie, mm -hmm. and if they both watched the same movie, I took their rating for it and found the absolute value of their difference, uh -huh. and added that onto a stacking value. Uh huh. Um, 
then I divided that stacking value by the number of movies that they shared in common. Yep. And then the value that resulted from that was their general similarity sorted by that. Okay, that's very reasonable. Who can detect some improve not improvements, but what, what are the weaknesses of that algorithm? Although it's not an unreasonable algorithm. Oh, um, somebody else. Yeah. Somebody doesn't follow yet. What are some of the weaknesses of this algorithm? Um, Remind me of your name again, please. I'm Tiffany. Tiffany, oh yeah. Um, it could potentially take a very long time. Because? Um, based on how the, I, I mean, I don't know how you organize this data, but based yeah. on how that's organized. Yeah. Um, the ice time of, like. Because to find if user A and user B are similar, what do I have to do? I have to look at user A, look at the hit, his reviews, look at user B, look at his reviews. It's not so bad. It's, um, you only have to do by the number of reviews each person has. But okay, any other uh, ways that you might be able to improve this algorithm? What's your name again? Vladimir. Vladimir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How could you improve this algorithm? Or what maybe are potential places in which that algorithm can be better? Not in terms of the code, but in terms of the the meaning. Okay. Can you restate what his algorithm is? Uh, I can't call it. Okay. Sure. Can you restate your algorithm again? Can you restate it again? Okay. I'll make sure I'm looking at it. So I uh, get it. Um, so for every user that's not the user that you're comparing to, um, it looks at both of the lists of movies that they both watched. Mm -hmm. If there's a common movie, it looks at the respective ratings for each movie. Um, it finds the absolute value of it and then inversely proportionates it. So if the absolute value is zero, mm -hmm. meaning they gave the same rating, then it returns a five. Mm -hmm. And then you add that, and then divide it by the number of movies they watched. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a number, and you can sort by that number. Yeah, yeah. Any, any ways in which it could be improved? Or not in terms of algorithm, in terms of the meaning of it, the way he thinks about similarity. Um, yes? Oh, sorry. Were you going to I was going to say it's kind of similar to what I did. I kind of factored in just like the total number of uh -huh. movies that they saw in addition to like the actual. What about if they didn't have any? If they didn't watch any movies in common? Um, because they wouldn't really be similar then. There's no way to tell if they're similar. Maybe. Um, what if? Uh, yes. Well, uh, my algorithm was pretty simple. It was just Wait, I didn't want a new one. I'm still oh, sticking okay. with this one. What if? Um, what if they watched ten movies that are different and only one that was the same? Right. Uh, anybody else want? Okay, now we can go on to other algorithms. Uh, yes, go ahead. You have a retort. Yeah, I should also mention that pretty much all of my code um, assumed that the movies they watched were random and not based on their personal tastes. Because uh -huh. we didn't really know how the data was right. Done yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. So I don't know if they sat people in a room and made them watch the movies and rate them, or if this was movies they chose. Right. So I assume that if they had, um, like. Uh, retracted. Yes. I think Please remind me of your name again. Uh, Joseph. Joseph. Okay. Uh, I think it's enough to just see how many positive ratings on similar movies they got. So like you take over seven or over eight. On similar movies, what do you mean similar movies? Uh, movies that they both saw. Uh huh. So like. I say you went, but not the. You didn't care so much in the number as long as they were yeah. about the threshold. What what they liked. What they liked. Okay. All right. Yes. Anybody have something totally different? Because this is the way they usually. No, just like a comment on that though, yeah. there's only 943 users yeah. and 100,000 ratings. Yeah. So the assumption works that it, uh, there, there will be overlap on almost, well, yeah. there will be statistics, but there will be overlap on every movie. Yeah. 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 140. So that's a, that, I, I like that comment because it says something about looking at the data and thinking about them not in a kind of a conceptual mathematical sense, but like what's really there. And so maybe it's a perfectly good algorithm because the odds are Unless it's a totally, unless it's not random, which we don't know. Anybody have something totally different to add to this? Okay. Um, uh, okay. Now, this is the hardest one of all. Uh, talk about predicting. I mean, in other words, when I go to Netflix, it says, "Peter, you probably like this movie, right? That that feature." So, how would you go about predicting whether? user U, would, what, what rating they would give to movie M. Any idea? Yeah. You know, one way, uh, probably not what you're No, I'm not looking for anything. Yeah. Is um, 
find the most similar users to user U, yeah. and then see what those most similar users have rated whatever movie you're looking at. So you pick the average of like, so 10 users who are most similar to Peter Bellis, and then whatever rating they've given to the average of their ratings uh -huh. will most likely correspond to yeah. popularity. Yeah. Just Let, you kind of go on what you already have with similarity. Yeah. And just use that to show the so you find, so we already have an algorithm to find the similarity between user one and user two, but that doesn't really help me. But you I can, can find, scale that to compare to every user. So I can take user U, uh, the, the one we're looking for, and just have a rank of them. Find the ones that are most sil similar to you and see what movies they like. Yeah. Yep. Uh, how would that perform? What is the O of that? The big O of that, more or less. By the number of users with movies. I mean, it's only 943, so I'm like, eh, it's fine for 943 yeah. users. So. Yeah, but later on, we'll try to put 100,000 through it. Um, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll try to like sort of cluster the data. Yeah. I mean, we don't have like genres here. Yeah. But you can sort of make like a pseudo genre kind of thing by like um, determining like. Um, so you know, you can see like certain like, tendencies between like what kind of movies a user would like vote for, mm -hmm. and you can find similar users that vote for that movie. So you can create sort of like a cluster of people voting for like similar movies. Mm -hmm. Based on that cluster, you can uh, pick. You can you can uh, so you can match users to that cluster and pick out a movie that the user hasn't seen from that cluster. From that cluster. And, and how does the movie end up in a cluster again? So you have to like. You have to like look at other users. Yeah. And um, uh, it's just, you know, that's very like, that to figure out how to do it's like a lot more complicated. Yeah. You know, there's a whole, whole, whole like, the math stuff behind that. But like, you would, uh, you'd have to find users that like vote favorably for like similar movies that they want. Users who vote favorably for similar movies. Like, it would be much easier to do what I'm talking about if we had, had a genre, for example. Yeah. I think there might actually genre. be a genre in the data. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Could, did anybody use, ah, did anybody use more data, more of the files than were minimally required, like the genre or something? No? Okay. Yeah, the genre was helpful. No, I'm just asking whether. I mean, the genre would play an effect if you are doing the uh, prediction. Yeah, you could say, you know, at least you you know, limited to the ratings of other users that are similar to me in, this, in the same genre or something like that. Um, so let's go back to, actually, let's, let's not, because I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, who found this a difficult, uh, who, who struggled here or there with debugging the, the code? OK, tell a little bit of the kinds of problems you hit. Uh, mostly with this sorting and loops. Uh huh. Because uh, like a lot of the time, if you, uh, for um, for gra uh, no, what's it called? Hashes. If mm -hmm. you wouldn't put like uh, dot key dot each, mm -hmm. uh, the key would be something very different. Like it would, I don't know, it would give me bugs. Mm -hmm. So like I had to put the whole thing dot key dot sort usually dot each. Hmm. I'm not following that exactly, but anyway, so these were like Ruby. Were they Ruby conceptual problems or more syntax problems? It it was just like very uncomfortable for me to not work with for loops. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, uh -huh. look at your code and, and um, actually, can I? Do you mind if I call it up and show yeah, everybody? It's, yeah, it's kind of incomplete. You mind? No. no okay. I don't mind, but okay. Uh, all right. It's not the most elegant. That's okay. I'm sure you were the only one for whom the code is not elegant. Uh, okay. And which one is yours again? Uh, yes. Uh, there, this one, right? Uh, no. The J? J, also? Uh, the C. Oh, this one, right here, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And. Okay. So. Let's look at this together. Um, so point us to the line where like, that you're talking about. Uh, so which one was it? Yes. Oh, here. Yeah. So hash is the input to popularity list. Popularity list is called. Uh, so eventually, if you go down, you see I listed it by this way. I found it. Okay, so you have popularity list of movie ID. Movie ID is an empty hash. 
Everybody, please look it on because this is pretty, I'm sure this looks like your code as well. So movie ID is an empty hash. Then you call load data, giving it movie ID, and it fills it up, movie ID. So um, why, what, is, what does movie ID contain as a hash? Uh, it contains, uh, so it contains all the movies uh -huh. and the user ratings for them. Movie ID arrow rating, so it's a, it's a hash. So it's the index of the hash is the movie ID. Yes. Yeah. Let, me, let me try something. For no, the, the key. Okay, so let's go here and put binding we got try. I don't know if this is just going to work, but we'll try it. And we put up here, at the top, require try. And I'm going to go into the shell. And I'm going to go st uh, drop file. <coughs> Uh, Cosi 166. Slash. Yo, Zip Cosi 166. Oh, what did I do wrong? Cosi underscore. Okay. DB is 2. 1. Okay, now I'm going to say Ruby, and I'm going to run Ruby. And, uh, okay, so that's what I just put in there, line 68. So for some reason, it's not letting me go into the debugger. I don't know why. Oh, oh, it's finished. Oh. Help me by end. Okay, okay. Try again. All right, so this is kind of a debugger. And so we're sitting at line 71. And we can now look inside the movie ID and see what's in there. Who has actually used Pry or used a debugger of any kind? OK, so this is a good thing. So all I did was um, require Pry at the top, that. And I did a gem install Pry so I could have the Pry library. You could just Google Ruby Pry, and then I put binding.pry anywhere in the code, and when it hits that, it drops into the code there, and I can go movie ID and see what's in it. Okay, so we have here uh, 196, which is a movie number, and then an array of all the ratings presumably that that movie got. So what he's done here, he's ha created a hash with the key is the movie ID. Now let me ask a question: Why didn't you use an array for that? Or is there a particular reason you didn't use an array? I guess. I guess I, I thought I could use uh, later the user IDs with that one. Uh huh. To call both of them, and for some reason I thought a hash would be better. I'm not. I'm not clear to which one is better. I'm just asking. Yes. So I actually use the hash as well, and the reason is just to, for quick access. Yeah. Use movie ID, so it's much quicker access than trying to store an array where it's empty spots. Because there'll be empty spots. Yeah. But I'm not sure it'd be faster. I think it'll be just more efficient. Yeah, memory. more efficient for what? Because like I want to go through it because there's 100,000 ratings. Yeah. It'd be quicker to find the movie at the rating. So. No, but you could have made an array that looked like this. So it could have been. Could have been. 41. Sorry. Array. A of 41 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In other words, every element of the array could be an array. Yeah, that's kind of like. I'm just saying, pointing out another possibility. Yeah, yeah. That's all. I'm not saying it's better or worse. But okay, great. So that so now we know that that hash contains the keys are movie IDs and the values are arrays of ratings for that movie. It makes perfect sense to me. So then. Uh, you give it to you give it to a method called popularity list that is going to return a movie list, right? So let's look at popularity list. And in here, so this is that hash with the whole thing in it. And he's saying hash dot keys. So let's see what hash dot keys returns. Oh, uh, dot keys. What does it return? It returns an array of all the keys of the different entries. So what are these numbers? What does each of these numbers represent? A movie ID, exactly. So basically we have a movie, we have an array, sorry, we have a array of movie IDs 
that he then sorts. So now they become they come into proper order. So if I go the sort, now we have the movie IDs in numerical order. So you can see that they're actually it looks like there's no gaps at, at this point. And then he says, okay, great. Each so he's going to walk through each element of that array, and he's so he's going to see one, two, three, four, five. He's going to see every integer which corresponds to a movie that had at least one rating. All right, and then he says, okay, value. He's computing popularity of that key, so that movie number. Because remember, every every uh, step in this loop, the key is a movie ID. And he's going to ask, what is the popularity of it? And he says, awesome. And so we look at popularity, and he's basically saying, uh, either nil if there's no such key. That means that there's no movie with that rating, which probably would be a bug, maybe. And otherwise, he's just counting the number of times there was a rating at all for that movie. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So this is returning either 0 or n, where n is how many ratings there were for that movie. Makes perfect sense. So that's the value. So that becomes a number. And then he creates a new hash called list. And he stores in it a new entry, indexed again by the movie ID, and this time with the, the total number of ratings that movie had. And then he returns that. So, okay. So would that work without the keys? Uh, no. <laughs> and the reason is that you can't, you know, there's, but there is, there are other variations. No, because if you look at the hash, we go here and we say yeah, so Ruby hash here. sort, how to sort a hash in Ruby. And, well, you don't even want to sort it. You want to actually just have the keys themselves. Yeah, right. You don't want the hashes themselves. How do you have the iterate through? You want to iterate. So you could say um, all in, you could say this, but I think still what you did is better. Um, you could say so basically this he says you could this is kind of what you did but with the keys. Here he's sorting it by the values. You sort it by the keys. I think what you did is perfectly correct. Great. So this is really good. Um, this I mean I hope that was useful to see it step by step disassembled like that. Um, but that's the thought process. I mean, it's very good if you didn't use a loop here. Uh, here, you fell down, you did it. Yeah. You couldn't couldn't help yourself any longer. Um, but that's fine. Um, okay, great. Anybody else want to uh, talk a little bit about where they struggle in getting this to work? And it's not anybody who says they didn't struggle, I don't believe because I think if I coded it from scratch, I would struggle. Could you just sorry? Could you just go back to how you booted up Pride? Yes. So basically, what you do is in the code. Uh, Require you say require price, okay? Uh, and in, on the shell, if you don't have it yet, you would have done uh, control C. You would have said gem install fry, yeah. okay? And then you just run it, okay? Does it matter where you put the uh, the require the, the fry does the binding dot fry? Yeah, that's the spot at which you drop into the debugger. So you weren't able to go past that. Line. There, there is, but you have to do. You have to add another one, which is. Uh, I think it's called. Let me just check. Uh, I think it's called Pride by Bug or something. I think. Um, Ruby Pride Bug. I think it's called by Bug. Computers. Uh, Yes, pride dash buy bug. That's the one I like better. So what you would do is you would do gem install pride dash buy bug. I'm pretty sure I already have. And then in the code you would go, okay, great, and I would put up here require pride dash buy bug. Make sure that worked. Hello, I have a connection. Uh, what? What if you don't have the permissions? Pardon me? What if you don't have the permissions to install it? Ah, okay. So quick little side trip for you guys, which I don't think I talked about specifically. But um, well, first of all, if you have no, if it says that you could do, are you on uh, what are you on Mac? Yeah. Yeah. I would recommend people on Mac to do the following. Uh, actually, everybody. 
Because what you would have to do is sudo gen install. But don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. And everybody would, sudo is like superpower. Like I'm becoming the, the, the top operator. And the problem is that that can gradually corrupt and make your system kind of yucky. It's not, it doesn't kill you. But instead, I, I recommend, because it's pretty easy, to look up to do the following things. I would look up, in fact, you could do it tomorrow in the lab. Uh, I'll help you. Find uh, a tool called Homebrew. Ah. This is for Mac only. There's something appropriate on Linux as well. Install that, and, and then also look for a tool called RBENV, R-B-E-N-V, and install that. And that's going to make your work environment much more nice. This particularly will make it so you can install gems without using the uh, supervisor mode. And that means that if later on you change to <coughs> Ruby or whatever, it's much more painless. So I would install Homebrew and RBN. Just find the sites and follow, follow the instructions. OK, but now that we have Bybug installed, I can go back here, and if I now run it, like I did before, and I do, I, now I can do step, step, I can do continue. So now I have debugging commands there too, okay? So again, pry and pry dash by bug. Okay, any other questions about this? Yes? Yes, please. Any Ruby question is open season. So uh, I think my code function is all right, and it's spitting out data that I expected to. Yeah. But when I do command B in subline, um, at the uh, very bottom bar for like two seconds, it says uh, built with one error. Ah, uh-huh. It just disappears. Is that something I need to worry about? Does it give the right output? Yes. In, 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 at the bottom there? Yes. No, don't worry about it, but show it to me later, and I'll help you figure out what it is. Uh, I can't imagine what it is exactly. Any other questions? OK, good. I thought you were going to go for a question. Good. Um, who else So uh, who who else? Ugh, who else wants to talk about their experience coding this and where you might have had trouble that might be useful to share with other people? Yes? Um, frequently, the hash in array would return no. The what? Uh, would return nil. What, what would? And a hash or right when I'd be looping over it. Uh huh. And it'd be unexpected and by the end of it that all of a sudden I'd, I'd have like a loop that's two or three layers deep. Uh huh. And all of a sudden it's nil and it's very painful to track down. And there's no exceptions for nils. No return. Uh, so can we look at your code? Yeah, sure. Tell me your directory again. Um, uh, I'll say uh, data varsity. Tell us where we can see that problem. Um, go to 97, line 97. And, okay. And that entire loop there. Uh -huh. is, um, oh, there's binding pride. Very nice. Good. So you had that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and the problem is that you have a, a loop here that starts here and goes till I think here. Yeah. And the problem you're saying is that. That most similar would be returning nil. Uh huh. And okay, I see, I see, I see. Is that an array? Pardon? Is this an array? Uh, users with similar taste? Users with similar taste. Let me. Um, usually, yes, that's an array. That's an array. I had this problem. Okay. Um, so you would you would ask, does it include the key? Wow, OK, so this is interesting. So we have here row, which is the element, the, the iterator for movie data. And that, cont that contains the hash with the values out of the file, basically? Yes. OK. So it says, OK, in that row key, whatever was the user ID, the, this is also very inefficient, I think, because it's like a no, loop to loop to loop. Yeah. Um, but this would return a nil, and that would be a problem, because then uh, 
and would be false. Though. So why would this be a problem if it turned into elk? Explain a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to, I'm basically trying to push things into most similar, which is just finding which use code is most similar to mm -hmm. um, the given use code, which is passing as a parameter. Yeah. And um, the weird thing is most similar when I inspect it at the end of the loop, it's the key is nil and it has some ridiculous value at the end of it towards the back end. The key is nil and the value is something absurd. Big, very big number. Yeah. Because it probably considered every single movie most similar because you were using nil somewhere. Yeah. Gotcha. And so you, you got stumped there. So can you, okay, I mean, I, this just takes a little bit more debugging, so we, I won't try to do it on the spot because I, I will make a mess of it, but um, does anybody have any comment on this loop that wants to immediately give them some help? Can you say again what the problem was? Um, most similar, the array most similar, sorry, the hash most similar basically has a user integer, but the key is the user ID and the value is the count of like how many movies they have that user is similar with the user of interest. Um, the weird thing is the key would be nil and the value would be something something absurd because if you go through the entire array, uh, the we go through all of movie data and a nil would be injected somewhere and it's kind of depressing. Uh, I think at least there's one problem in, in the second last you statement. This one? Yeah, this one. If most similar and bracket user ID it should not be passed uh, string user ID, it should be passed a key. The key is a ah. That should be row bracket user ID that's just like like this. Just like the, the line down there. Because most similar bracket user ID is all okay. Uh, yeah. If it's nil, you're setting it to one. Same, because user ID is a string. Yeah. You cannot use because string as the key. You use the, the number which user ID. Yeah, but why is that in in quotes? Oh, never hit that point in this case. Yeah, so you see that you see what he's saying? Yeah. Is that do you think that's correct? That that's a bug? It's probably probably, yeah. Okay, so most similar is a hash, and you're checking at the hash position you called user ID, that's the key for every single one of them. Every time you go through the loop, you're looking at the hash position called user ID. The first time it's gonna be nil, so you're gonna set it to be one. Mm -hmm. The subsequent time it's not gonna be nil, and so you're gonna set it to be plus equals one. And every time through this loop, if there's only one ha entry in this hash at the key called oh, user ID. I did not control the role of user ID. You should have done this. Okay. I think. In all of these cases. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 so with the book. No, I think he has a string as a... Otherwise, you're just looking for the key for the string user ID. For this row, there's a key that's a hash of five, uh, four values off of the radius <laughs> file, and one of them is tagged as user ID. Uh, yeah, so this should do the trick, I think. One bracket in Okay, well, thank you. Doesn't have a thank you, human compiler. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, that, so that's... Thanks for sharing that. That's really good. Can you save that and so yes, I'm actually, modifying, <laughs> I'm actually modifying your file. I'm yeah, sorry no. about that. <laughs> Let me show you one stupid little trick here. Uh, I equals nil, I dot nil question mark. That's the, uh, the um, uh, idiomatic way of checking for nil. I dot nil question mark, not I equals equals nil, although it means the same. Okay, very trivial point. Excellent, thank you. Any, uh, there's any, other, any other hand? All right, that's really great. Um, this, these problems are more difficult than they seem, and while it's interesting to think about how to do a good rating system, uh, it's equally important to uh, struggle with Ruby and figure these things out. Um, uh, in the past, some people, and maybe some of you have, um, loaded in this loop uh, just use zero, row zero, one, two, three, four, and had an array where the first position was the timestamp, whatever they are in order. 
And, but using a hash is much better in a way because it protects you from errors. If you just have a convention that says the first slot in the array is the rating, the second slot is the movie ID, the third slot is the user ID, the fourth slot is the timestamp, and they're just indexed by integer, it's much easier to have the code go nuts without you ever noticing it. If you're using that, the, the hash keys, uh, it protects you a little bit because it'll give you a failure. The other thing I'll remind you of, which I'm sure some of you hit, is this. If I have uh, my hash equals name pedo uh, home Arlington, and I say my, oops, my hash bracket name, for example, what is this going to return? Anybody? No. Nil. Who doesn't think it's going to return nil? Anybody think it's going to return anything but nil? No, you're right, it's going to return nil. <laughs> but I can say my hash dot fetch, I think. And it'll say, it'll actually throw an error. So if you want to give yourself a little extra protection, you can use fetch instead of the bracket notation, and you'll find out right away if you're trying to access a, a key that does not exist. OK, good, wonderful. Okay, let's um, go back to our scheduled program here. Ah, great, great. Um, oh, where's my window that I want? Okay. Great. All right, who wants to talk uh, about describe one of the products. Okay, we're going to begin now the process of and the rest of the class today, so the next uh, half hour, we're going to talk about products. Okay, So uh, I'm going to put the list of products on the screen so we can all look at them. Um, and I'm going to ask you, anybody, to put their hand up and talk about why a particular product is really interesting to them and what more they've thought of in ways to improve the product, change the product, take it in a different direction. Anybody? Yes. So, I like the... Remind process. me of your name. I'm Aria. Yes. And, I mean, you already know this because we are the ones who suggested it, but I really like the class planner idea because I just have like so many like Evernote files that are like, these are the classes I want to take for these next <laughs> four years. Yep. And I think that it could be really good to just have it like a structured place where you could like see what classes... So explain were. more what the app would look like, would look like in your mind's eye. Or anybody else wants to add to, to this particular class planner? Does it have a clever name? I forget. This is just class planner. Uh, I'm not class saying it's class planner. Class planner. OK. So um, uh, yeah, so talk a little bit more about what it would look like. I, I crank it up. What do I see? Uh, it would be like the first time you crank it up? Or yeah, the first time. I mean, it would ask you like what classes you've already taken. Like, yeah, it probably would ask you first who you are. Right. OK, yep, go ahead. But it would ask you like what majors or minors you were interested in, and yep. then what classes you've already taken. Yep. And then after that, it would be like it would show you like how many classes you need left, and then based on like whatever data the registrar has, it would be like these are the classes that are probably offered next year. The course description say like offered every two years, every yep. three years. So it'll be like you know in your junior year you could try this course or this course. Yep. And then and would it factor in the courses you've already taken? Like, would it go look at, can it even go look at your own transcript to see what you've taken already? Or is that? I mean, I guess we could do some kind of like parsing thing, because there's an unofficial transcript, there's a text file. Oh, where do you get that? On Sage. On, on Sage? Yeah. Oh, for yourself? Yeah, so you, so you can paste that in or whatever. Yep, 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 yep. Um, you guys didn't talk to anybody at LPS yet about what feeds might or might not be available to you, right? I spoke to the guy who runs uh, Schedule, yeah. uh, and he said that the way that Brandeis uploads their data is, uh, well, Brandeis, he doesn't actually go through the courses in some like varsity. Right. Brandeis uploads the courses into Schedule. Uh -huh. And um, I can ask him again, like, who uploads this, and if I can get in contact. Okay, all right, all right. Um, and so the, and so tell me what, you said you have all these, uh, these notes that have things in them that you keep by hand. So what's in one of those notes? Uh, I'm just curious how this works in the real world, in your real world. I have like 
over here, like I have all the classes I was considering this semester, and I have yeah. a bunch of like, like what books I need or like what times they meet. And then here I'm like, after this semester, then junior fall I would take these classes based on what I did, and then junior spring I would take these classes, and then senior fall and all. And this I, stuff. so this the app wouldn't help you with your own schedule. It wouldn't even do that. Would it even say, oh wait, you can't take class X and Y because they have the same time slot? Would you go that far? It could do that. I mean, uh huh. That'd be pretty easy. I, I was thinking more it would be useful for like planning out your major to know how many classes yep. you have left to complete. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody have any questions about this? Does this sound like a useful thing as a student? Anybody have any thoughts about it, good or bad? If it's not, you can let me know. <laughs> no, I'm asking now for everybody here. Uh, maybe could you include the easiness of classes somehow? So Because you want to avoid those, right? <laughs> User reviews. Yeah. Where would you get them? I mean, where would you get them? You can just submit, yeah. like, you know. Just, yeah. It's really like, you know, where you can like, <coughs> people find from rate my professor. Yeah. yeah. But that's not really that efficient. I could do, like, uh, with a sentiment analysis. Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, ratings. No, uh, I mean, Rennes does can... have course ratings on their website. Where do you find those? Really? Uh, it's always, they don't really have the link. You have to Google like Brandeis course rankings. Is it the thing that's done by the student senate or something? Do you have yeah. one? Yeah, it's the thing that at the end of the year, it's like you do it on Sage to do the evaluation. Yeah, I know that. I get those, but what do you guys, them. you guys don't have access to them. So, so how do we do? We just see like the average rankings of things and then on like earlier classes. But like, wait, let's, I just want to see it because I'll show you what I've seen. It's, just Google and Brandeis and course and evaluation. Course and evaluation. Also, I know I personally so, just fill all of those out. Automatic. It's the one at the weird URL. How, what do you mean so automatically? Not that one. Scroll down you, a bit. You get your grades earlier if you fill them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just do the book. Right, so scroll down. You don't pay attention. I don't know. More. You, so you don't write three paragraphs of commentary. <laughs> <laughs> what the reviews should be after the grades. Scroll down. Yeah, exactly. Uh, wait, let me find it. It's not this one here. Course no. evaluations. This one. Uh, it's uh. Right. And it's also before the grade is, has come out. So right. 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 Uh, it's the student union. This one is the one I know. Is this one you know? No. Oh, there's another one? Oh, yeah, it's that one. It's just up here. Oh, wait, here, I found it. Go back. Oh, yeah, that's it. Is this no, that no. one? That's yeah. the one that you just clicked. This one? It. Yeah. Okay. It didn't use it blue, though. I don't know why it's blue, but anyway. So click on the link. You the click. link that you used to log in. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've, I've looked wow. now. Oh, you probably have to be a yeah. student. No, 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 I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen this. Okay, good. And so this data might be available as well. Okay, yeah? So wait, don't, you, you can see what people wrote about this class? No, no it's very superficial. Or what is it? Because there's a human editor that goes through the actual ratings and find. Well, let me just look look up myself. Or is it just like this has been evaluated 134 times? No, no. It's like. See, this is all I get. Oh. Okay. And then they say. Um, they say here that if there's a trend, like everybody gets, mm -hmm. says this professor is an idiot. What? Yeah, you can go look at <laughs> it all the time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Once those are classes like 10 years ago and see what people said about professors who've been teaching here forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, it, but it gets, there's some human being that's doing some editing. I mean, it's mm -hmm. obviously they're taking out the, the taking the noise out. Uh, anybody else have thoughts about this idea, this uh, planet? Planet. Okay. Well, there is something similar, like Brandeis that schedule that met. Some Brandeis students were doing. Right. It. That was in a JBS that I thought right. a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. Is that that's still alive, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, <coughs> the students use it, right? Instead of um, yeah. yeah, it's actually very popular. Useful, yeah. Uh, so and you know him. Yeah. What's his name again? Um, let me check my email. <laughs> <laughs> I did somewhere. No, I did something Jewish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he uh yeah. He got married and had a baby. And so, so I expected that the, that the support of that side would go down quickly. But, but anyway, okay, who's got another product they want to give a pitch on that they think is really cool that would like to recruit other people to want to work on? Yes. So my project was uh, Tinder for food, restaurants, and bars. Um, I kind of took the idea from Food Spotting. It's an app that um, users take pictures of food and you can submit it and then you do it like in a Tinder fashion, left and right, like yes, no. Um, the problem solved is going to be usually if you're sitting around with friends, you can't decide what to order, especially if you've been living around here for a while. Um, so kind of pictures help on that. And then um, I kind of want to mix in the Twitter aspect of it so different people can follow someone. So if he's giving you good suggestions, like go here, go there. Uh, so this is any restaurant? Any restaurant. 
any restaurant, bar, or food. And, uh, and so what happens? You see, it, you eat something, you like it, you say, I liked it. Yeah, I like take a picture, I like it, it goes on on the web. Yeah. Um, other people rate it. Um, if you said so yes. So it's a specific, like I like the, the, the General Gao chicken at this Chinese yeah. restaurant that I had on December 12th. Yeah. And if you like it, it has a link to Yelp, the telephone number, you can yep. order it right away. Yep. Um, you can follow different users if they're like good at suggesting things. Yep. Um, also, since um, there's like geolocations involved, yep. so you can go on a map. I was thinking because if my friends from back home visit me, yep. I don't really know where to go where on a street where like stuff is happening, like mm -hmm. restaurants, bars, or something. So you can plot like a density of how many youth people are um, uploading pictures on yep. that on that street, and yep. you can just say, let's go to that street. There's a bunch of options there. Let's and walk around and pick something. How is it different from Yelp? Um, Yelp is not really good though. You can't really um, find good suggestions. You got to go through a bunch of tags, um, and usually um, it's not specific to like menu items. It's not specific for gotcha. menu items, and usually the more expensive places yep. get better reviews, in yep. my opinion. Uh -huh. than like, well, there's already something like that for Grubhub. Like when you order online, yeah, or like Seamless or Grubhub, each food item is individually rated. Yeah, well, this is more like inter interactive in the sense that, and not only like it's more food, fun, and it's not I mean, only restricted to food. You huh? can like take it's a picture like, of the bar. Like I mean, I you know I, I yeah. have Instagram, and like half or two thirds of my pictures I get because the people I follow are food. Right. You know, so it's kind of like that. Except now I can rate it and find out where they and where they got that. Yelp doesn't really do a good. Idea. Yeah. Um, there's not really a good re ratings for what I look usually. Yeah. Yeah, who, who likes that idea? Who thinks the, has, has ideas on how to improve it, how to change it? Any suggestions about it? Yes? I mean, I, I just don't like the idea of swiping left or, uh, swiping left or right on like, food that you don't like. Um, but outside of that, I think it's... What, what, how would you swipe? Or no swipe at all? I'd say no swipe at all. Um, or rather, I'm just trying to think of how this is going to like drop down. So it's like, yes, you're going like, to swipe down on like a restaurant, or you're going to swipe down on food? Um, you swipe down on the food item, which links you to the restaurant, and um, um, it's not necessarily swipe yes, swipe left for yes, swipe right for no. Um, like like food spotting, the app did it. It was just a photo reel, so like your iPhone photo reel, you just go by and then click yes or no. Um, I have a suggestion. Why not make a food rating, uh, like food rating prediction on the phone too? Yeah. Well, you can use the recommender. There's like a question. Yeah. Yeah. Based on yes. That. You could also maybe like make it so that you could just see like different random food items in your area so you could see a picture that like you really like and then you get like you want to go to yeah, that well, restaurant well, that's the main page yeah, yeah it okay. gives you right. random pictures of all the oh, so if you're hungry so you're like oh around, let's yeah. see oh this looks yeah. like yeah. i want to go here gives you, so that makes you sense. 25 miles. miles i think it's cool i think it's cool yeah that's actually cool. yeah anybody else have any thoughts about this one well my main main sales point i think which is differentiates me from everyone else would be the map for you actually because like I don't really want to go to a specific restaurant I want to go where there's options mm -hmm. so that will kind of mm -hmm. I feel like will solve my problem mm -hmm. good okay who wants to make another pitch for another product that they're that they're keen on but they want to recruit others to come work with it on them work on it with them come on none other no others nobody likes any other come on you not yes I mean I kind of like barter me a lot uh-huh go for uh, it tell us what it is uh, basically, from what I got from Barter Me, it's exactly like the barter system, mm -hmm. but an app. Uh huh. That's really that sounds really uh, basic, but point. But you can like do it over time and space, which is pretty cool. Um, I I did, I organized a Secret Santa and I used Elfster. So could what, be what did you use? Elfster. Elfster. Okay. It's like I don't know it was like this thing that I found on the internet that was like a social networking site, but for Secret Santas. Yeah. Uh, so I think this would be like, you know, I think it would be pretty good and you could like keep track of everything that you barter. The only problem is, uh, do people still use the barter system? Uh, Craigslist, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's a famous story of a guy that started with, I think, a, a paper clip. And got a Porsche. And got a, and bartered his way up to a Porsche. Whether it's true or not, the whole story shows a paper clip, or he exchanges for a what? For a... Doorknob. Or, yeah, like that. And he works his way up. Yeah, so it's a really funny story, but it's kind of like that. I mean, there's things you have that you could care less about somebody wants and vice versa. I guess uh, you could make like a functionality list uh, to just show like what you have that could potentially be. Yeah, 
and also compare that to uh, what's on the market. Yeah. Uh, to actually show like the money uh, to show the actual value of that. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can look through your closet and you see a pair of old sneakers. You see a racquetball racket you haven't touched in a while, and and um, you know, an empty cigar box. You don't want any of those, so you put them on there, and somebody else, like, oh my God, I've been looking for a cigar box. You know, I want that. I mean, what is it worth? You know, 30 cents, but somebody else has got something that's worth a dollar, you swap. That's the idea. Why yeah. would they ever make a swap that's not favorable? Pardon? Why would anybody swap them, though? Because you have different uh, conceptions of value. What, oh, okay. The cigar box is worthless to me, but it's worth a dollar to you. There is actually it's, 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 re, it's, it's I think it's realistic, yeah. Yes, go ahead. I thought uh, you... Can we, are we still on this idea? Or uh, no. Uh, anybody else want to talk about barter me? So the purpose here is for you guys to start thinking, ah, that's a cool one. Like maybe I want to work on that one. Yes. So I think the Carpe Diem one is actually really good. Yeah. Because like uh, a lot of people have, I don't know, like a eight, nine person friend group. Yeah. And it's really annoying to like send text, me group texts or something. And if, if someone like says, oh, hanging out in this rosy or something, you know, you could just check that sometimes and see what other people, mm -hmm. other friends of yours are doing. Mm -hmm. And it could like spread to other campuses. Absolutely. It's not just for Brandeis. It's a good, good wide idea. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Anybody, anybody have, have thought about thoughts about that product? Um, engine of growth. You need a lot of people to make it good. So you need. Don't parents. start throwing this jargon at him, Nick. No, he says he's talking about money and growth. And remember, yeah. in this well, class, our goal is is primarily to build something that's technically interesting, engineering-wise interesting. It's a bonus if it makes money, but that's not your first. I think there is an engine of growth there, but I wouldn't. That's not it. The priority is, oh, this is cool. You know, six weeks from now, you're still having fun designing it. That's that's what the goal is. Anybody have questions about Bartermy? I mean, about um, Carpe Diem? Yes. Um, are you going to be able to like talk to each other within that like um, application? I guess because I, you know, like you know, if if you can't like immediately update everyone who's involved in the event, um, like you know, maybe there's a slight change in location because it's starting to rain or something like. Yeah, I guess you could have like a group chat and then just like events, what people are doing and I don't know, a lot of yeah. different things that happen. Oh, you could say that, I, I say that, you know, there's a, there's a uh, at four o'clock there, we're gonna play Frisbee on Chapel Field and then it starts raining, you can update and say, hey, it's raining, put a thread attached to it saying, you know, we're moving it to five, whatever, something like that. Okay, anybody else want to? Uh, make a comment or a pitch about one of the products that they think is well. Who else thinks Carpe Diem is cool? Anybody else like it or maybe, eh, not so popular? Okay. Um, who else wants to talk about a product that they pitched or they saw somebody else pitched that they think is cool? They want to describe it and say why it's cool or how they would change it. Yes. Uh, fine, I'll do um, radical. Uh, basically, yeah, because I have a lot of friends who I probably already mentioned this in class a bunch of times, but I have a bunch of friends that do like creative stuff, like um, like you need a crew to do to do a film shoot. Uh, I mean, there is Craigslist, but Craigslist kind of become became really spammy uh, over over time. So this brings it back uh, brings it back to its core, and you can and what I'm thinking is you do different sections, uh, not only music, but we. Uh, which was the original idea that uh, actually my friend uh, mm -hmm. had, but also do things that you need for um, need for uh, like for film. Uh, you can get like a gaffer. You can get a um, what's the thing called? Uh, you can get an editor. You can get uh, whatever you want. Um, and it's also uh, sectioned up into parts of the different arts. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get. So you have like a music section, you have a film section, you have uh, like a bunch of different sections in a main hub. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, uh, people just post listings about stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also, you can also have a geolocation uh, geo mm -hmm. uh, from different plate, uh, from different maps. Uh, I don't really know how to use that mm -hmm. yet, but. Um, we will learn. Yeah. I don't know, I think it will be a pretty good way for, I think it would be a pretty good grassroots way to get people who don't exactly like, a uh, more trustworthy way of getting people to do stuff like this. How does that work today? If I'm looking for a director for my film or an editor or whatever, uh, film yeah. project on campus, let's just focus, or you need some actors on yeah. campus. What do you do? You go on Facebook, I guess, right? I mean, yeah, but there's going to be, but it's really informal and that right. really doesn't work. Even, even I guess. And LinkedIn doesn't have like that functionality for that yep. because 
again, that's mainly for like business and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Craigslist, Craigslist is thing also Mandy and, and Indeed, but you can't really find like the good jobs unless you actually have to subscribe to something big. But this is mainly for like freelancers. Yeah, I think Craigslist has got a reputation of being a little bit sketchy. Yeah. And so you don't necessarily want to like uh, put yourself out there. Um, and who, who likes this idea? Who has thoughts about it? Who can see applications for it? Who would like to work on it? Any further comments? Not selling? Not selling? All right. Um, I, you know, it's funny. Is there anything like it? I mean, in other words, there must be Craigslist for X. There must be other things like that. What other communities have a specialized Craigslisty thing? I mean, this could also be Match.com for artists. I mean, in other words, you're trying. It's like a matchmaker. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, Look up the dots. The what? The dots. Creatives, uh, connecting creatives to opportunities. It's like a, a LinkedIn for creatives. The dots, literally like that. Yeah. How weird. Mm -hmm. It's a UK one. Okay. But it's portfolios and stuff like that. You're, this yeah. is strictly. Well, I mean, you can just get some ideas from. Yeah, it. yeah, you can get ideas from. It. I mean, to me, it sounds like a like actually one that. There's a use case out there. It's not just frivolous. Um, so I think it's pretty interesting. It's also manageable within the framework of this course. Yeah. And you have a friend who's actually an expert in the field. And you're kind of, aren't you a cinematographer, yeah. film guy? So it's always good to have domain expertise, to know exactly how these people, what makes them tick, to find people to do beta testing on your product. All those things are real pluses. Mm -hmm. So anybody else want to talk about a product that's on this list of big that they're fond of, yes. And the student opinion panels are kind of like, you know, this, but for focus group. Yeah. And I think it was a, it's a very good idea, and I apologize for this, but it, I think it's also a very solid business idea. Uh-huh. Uh, ah! But uh, I think that it's, it, it's going to be technically also interesting because there are lots of different areas of it in play. It, you know, it's, it's like keeping track of subscribers and tagging them correctly mm -hmm. um, so that you know when a client comes in and says you know we're trying to round up a bunch of people and we don't just want to go to Columbus Ohio we want to do it online with people yeah um, we can you know we can send out the uh, invitations to the right people with that are tag tagged with the correct um, attributes yep. and then you know expect an RSVP and then we get a focus group going yep. you know and depending on how many people you know what the turnout is and what the clients necessities are mm -hmm. and you can start you know thinking about okay so the client offered let's say you know ten thousand dollars for us to for us to do this and, and they wanted us to, to gather 500 people that means we can pay our subscribers you know a, a cut mm -hmm. of this too so I think it was it's a it's a very good idea lots of da database play lots of mm -hmm. you know tagging and, and hash mapping and and um, just good maintenance hash mapping hashing sorry. hash mapping um, Yes, all that's true, and also I think that the clients can uh, can be rated by the participants and vice versa. So you have a little bit of Uber stuff going on. You find yeah. out who actually pays the bills, what students are articulate, which ones are not, whatever. So there's a bit of like, and and you can also spread it to other campuses internationally. I mean, it's got a lot of possibilities. Yeah. You guys understand this idea? Yeah. Who likes it? Who has ideas to add to it or how to modify it? Any thoughts about that? Come on, guys. Still have eight minutes. Stay awake. I just like it. You just like it? Okay, that's fair. Okay. Okay. Did I see a hand? No. Um, anybody else want to pitch uh, uh, one of the products on the list? Let me go through them. I want to hear which ones, like everybody thinks sucks. Okay, so let's go through <laughs> I'm going to point at them if, if you go, well, I guess, uh, if you don't think it's any good, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Play along, boys. Come on. Radio station. Now, the thing I like about this, who was this, whose was this, is that this guy actually is in charge of WBRS. Talk about domain knowledge. He's got this problem himself. What is it? What is it? Present. He doesn't like it himself. That's the problem. See, sales. We're not teaching sales in this class, but it's important to look like you like it. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody's going to buy it. Go ahead. Okay, so, the issue I guess we're solving is that a lot of radio stations, people have they're close to from their laptops use Spotify, Google Music, whatever, just stream music instead of using physical media that you get. Yeah. Um, and so, this is sort of a, a database that 
you would be able to um, input information <coughs> on the physical media you have at the library, give it a location, uh, arrange playlists by a DJ, uh, and like sort of share that among all of the listeners and all the DJs so you can see what people have been playing, where they've been getting it, uh, you can go physically find the CD in the library instead of just using terrible quality streams. So yeah, I have a question about that. So you're saying that people use streams <coughs> mostly nowadays, and you, but they also have a record, a physical media collection. Yeah, we have a huge library. Is it still being added to, or is it yeah, stopped yeah. in like 2005? Like 100 CDs a month. Well, really? Yeah. Holy moly. Uh, and so, and then they, you know, whoever placed the order maybe plays it once or twice, but then it gets lost and nobody ever gets to it again. It's not that it gets lost, it's that people just don't want to wander around looking for Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Do you have a feeling this problem is actually a common problem among co college radio stations? I mean, to me, the thing is being able to being able to go on the website and say, it's find out what's that that's playing right now, or what were the last five things that were played. Which occasionally you're in the car, you hear something you like, you get home, and I, I don't know what it was. Um, okay, I think it's a cool idea. What do you guys think? I think it's cool because domain expertise, because we have somebody here who knows the space. You can build something. You can be sure of one customer who's going to use it. And he probably has a network of other people in similar positions in other com uh, schools who will use it also. It's got possibilities. It's got audio. It's got database. Probably even mobile, web. I mean, it's got a lot of stuff. Yes? Uh, you can call me a little bit closed-minded for saying this, but I just don't see that any sort of future to, like, especially like five, ten years from now, yep. like radio stations in general. You think radio stations are going to go away? I, I personally think so. Like, but so. Because, like, you know, with the internet and, like, you know, being able to download and apply Spotify. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be, like, uh, kind of restricted to what songs are playing at a given moment. Yeah. Instead, you know, if you have, like, a, a way to play a certain song. Yeah. It's a far better idea to, like, look up that song and play it on the Yeah. Band. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have a couple of disagreements here. Go ahead. I mean, uh, one thing is just, like, a lot of people use transportation, like, driving a car. Yeah. Radio, you don't want to pick your own music, and if you're doing that, that's illegal. You should be looking at the road and the driving. Right, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. is it, like, I hear this song, and then the app totally tells me where to buy the physical CD? Or like, no, no, or no. It's, it's a tool for the DJ. It? It's a tool for the DJ. To say, uh, to, to remember what their playlist, but at the same time, they'll say, I'm playing this song right now, and that information goes up on the website of the radio station, so anybody can check on it. Um, I think the other thing is, I, I use Spotify all day long, but I very often am using a canned playlist that somebody else made, because I don't want to sit there. I want to discover new music. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, you could use that, but I also select specific albums, but I, I want to hear new music that I don't know yet, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, you close my eyes. No, I'm just kidding. Well, why don't you use Shazam then? Yeah, let's Shazam that. and Sound. No, Shazam, anyway, whatever. Okay, let's not waste too much time on that. Who wants to pick, uh, okay, let's go through. Keep the, the, uh, every, okay, so, explosive eye. Let's turn any picture into a crazy picture. Is this guy, anybody else? The rest of the world like it. Tinder for food? Okay, let's just change the game. Say yay versus, uh, yeah. Okay, and for books? Yeah. <laughs> Average, okay. Go ahead. Pretty interesting. It's an intensive part of it, which you can sell it. Yeah. Uh, Radical. Radical was the Craigslist for creatives. Remember my name. Yeah. Okay. Carpe, <laughs> Carpe diem. Yeah. Student opinion panel. Yeah, yeah. Trade assistant. Yeah, yeah. Twitter feed reader. Yeah. yeah. Video chat pen pal. Who, who wrote Video Chat Pen Pal and wants to describe what it does? I, mean, I, I wrote it, and yeah. I think it's just like... It you still like it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I think it would be like a cool like, thing to play around with. Yeah. It would be maybe potentially good for classrooms. Yeah. It's just like you know, combining Omega with a uh, learning perspective. Yeah. And you know, being able to practice languages uh, by talking to random people. Yeah. And like, you know, because like, Omegle is kind of stupid. You don't do it. You just well, how does Omegle work? It's just do a video chat or chat with someone randomly. There's no, like, I mean, there's topics, but no one ever talks about them. There was a this. time when there was one where you randomly saw somebody else's video, which turned into a total pornographic chat meltdown. Chat roulette. Chat roulette. Chat roulette. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, so, so. Hopefully this would be like more, you know. Yeah. Is chat roulette still exist? 
Yeah. I think it does. They were doing this thing stuff. where they were shunting all the like people who were like you know exposing themselves to yeah. like a different website. Uh -huh. Like I mean, after the initial year of like how yeah. already it kind of went away. Yeah. Guys, live journal still exists. Say what? Live journal still exists. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Everything still exists. Um, how about Zillow for dorm rooms? Yeah. Okay. How about how, it is practical in like a huge campus? Yeah, yeah. Where you have twenty thousand people going to a school. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, here you can just ask your neighbor. Kind yeah. Of. I mean, I still think it's pretty useful because I remember last year, yeah. like all my friends when they got it's not useful for like freshmen and stuff, but for when you get your lottery number, yeah. I, all my friends were going around like to all the castle and being like, what does this one look like? What does this one right. look like? And I know like one of my friends specifically has an issue with her room that she knew she probably wouldn't pick it, but her walls are like paper thin. Yeah, stuff like that. Don't don't the rule of thumb is don't pick castle. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, don't don't pick castle. Well, no, but now yeah. uh, she could write a Please. review being like, this Unless room has like one. paper thin walls. Like if this bothers you, like don't right. pick this room. And then someone could choose it. I like right. the idea. Yeah. I'm kind of biased because yes, I actually came up with this idea independently. Uh huh. Cool. Quick um, I think um, this idea would be better implemented in a larger scope. Uh huh. So like you don't have to necessarily make it just for dorm rooms. Yeah. But like if you expanded it to let's say apartments or like uh, houses. So like you know if you're renting an apartment, you can look up a review for the apartment complex or for the actual apartment. And, uh, What's it like to live in this exactly. building? Yeah, actually it's a good idea. Yeah. That is just uh, but but you can, can you can confine it. Zillow is much more factual. Brandeis though. living, you know, like Charles Bank Garden Park, you know, mm -hmm. it's like right there. Okay, to, so let's go quickly to tomorrow. Uh, everybody should try and see, I put here, if, you, if this is going to be a fair bit of work, Agile Development with Rails, Chapter 1. Note, do not install RVM like you suggest, instead install RVM. Okay, please, 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 please note that. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to, well we did this already, we're going to talk about movies part two, but mostly we're going to break it into groups, not the groups, just into groups, and have more discussion about the product so we can get more information about what your preferences are and also maybe knock some off the list permanently. And then by the end of tomorrow, we will have enough information to create the teams. Okay? Um, I'm going to leave this up. This, uh, so feel free to add to it based on today's conversation. If you have more that you want to say, vote up, vote down, please put that on there, okay? See you tomorrow. So, five, five, yes. Uh, four, one, one. Yeah, I just, I just, Wait, so it's not two thirty, it's five. It's five, yes. I have, I'm gonna send an email so they get back to my desk. Okay, cool. And you'll be the next one to send us to the class. Something is, I don't think you're coming to the class. Oh, yeah. I don't know the other class on the five things. Yeah. Hey, I just want to say something. Yeah. I'm completely improved that this class started in Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Well, also, I have a clue. I got it. I don't know if you heard, but me and the person are trying to find a brand next hackathon here. Uh, yeah. I might have heard. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. But we're right. Right. right now we're at the point we have a bias advisor. Right now we're trying to get sponsors. I don't know if you would probably be really helpful there. We're just kind of doing a lot of things. Yeah. What do you mean like, like, be there for like, like shop the API or something. Oh, oh, oh. Or just for advertising. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Send me an email and I'll also make that for you. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.